Welcome to CNCF Minutes. And in this video, we learn about Falco, Cloud Native Runtime Security. So Falco uh, was started around 2016, uh, donated to CNCF around 2018. And as of 2019, it is a CNCF incubating project. Uh, Falco, the Cloud Native Runtime Security project is the de facto Kubernetes threat detection engine. When you talk about the Kubernetes security these days, so you will always find Falco over there uh, with the desired set of rules that you want to evaluate against. Uh, so before diving into Falco, let's first understand the cloud native uh, security landscape and where does uh, Falco sits in. So there are two uh, major portions to it. One is the prevention uh, and one is detection. So prevention is changing the behavior of the process, like stopping the process, uh, etc. For example, uh, SE Comp and App Armor, they fit into the prevention uh, domain. Next comes the detection. So detection is monitoring the process and evaluating against the set of rules or whatever fancy word that you can call, uh, and then alerting on top of it. So Audit D and Falco sits over here. So obviously there should be both prevention and detection, you know, uh, defined and implemented for your cloud native um, landscape and your applications and infrastructure. Now, how does Falco kind of detects? So uh, Falco makes use of syscalls. So think of like, uh, whenever you have an application, your application will always be interacting with the kernel. So all the, after all the layering and the processing, the, the final call that goes to the kernel is via the syscalls and applications interact via the kernel via the syscalls. Uh, so whether it's a container or it's a process, so everything will be uh, kind of doing syscalls to the kernel. And Falco will parse these system calls and checks against the rules defines and then alerts on the rules violation. So that's how like Falco is tracking uh, the most core part, which is the system calls. And then it is able to uh, check against the rules which are defined. There are obviously set of predefined rules which are amazing. And there can be a lot of rules that you can define on your own. Uh, some of the stats. It's like 4,200 plus GitHub stars, 120 plus contributors, 35 million plus polls, and uh, 3.5 plus million polls for the sidekick, uh, another another project by the community. So kind of project is driven by the community. In order to understand more, let's understand how Falco works. Uh, then only it will be like the picture will get clear. You have an application. Your application is running on Kubernetes. Your Kubernetes is running on an operating system. An operating system is talking to the kernel via the system calls. So that is how the, the kind of process is running. So you have application, Kubernetes, operating system, and kernel. So Falco has two uh, things like user space and kernel space. So Falco will be, Falco engine will be there in the user space. Now, whenever you install Falco, uh, Falco will be installing a kernel module. So Falco will be uh, installing the driver. So that driver is the, um, there are multiple drivers like kernel module, eBPF uh, probe. Uh, for the latest uh, kernel versions, there will be eBPF. For the previous ones, there will be a kernel module that will be translating the syscalls so that, uh, you know, and then um, giving that back to the engine so that it can validate against the config rules. So you have this app kubernetes os the call is coming over here then you have ring buffer and evpf depending on whatever driver is there and then it is going to the engine uh, now uh, there are ap there is like these two libraries are already there that you know enriches uh, the the system calls but there there are also plugins uh, that that can be used like uh, for the cloud logs and the apis that can be used to enrich more data with with the libraries and then is the engine. So your YAML files and the configuration files and the Kubernetes audit logs that tracks all the access to the Kubernetes API events, uh, they are then passed uh, via the engine. And then after all the checks, so after validating whatever data it has enriched using the libraries and the plugins, uh, the engine will check against the rules that are defined uh, in the YAML file. Uh, everything is kind of written in the YAML uh, and then it will be sending the output. Now output can be again in various formats like grpc http prometheus uh, std out and when it's like http you have like falco sidekick which is another uh, great project that lets you uh, you know uh, take that output and send it over to slack s3 serverless loki and various other uh, plugins out there so this is how the overall falco works now let's move on to the installation. Uh, so it can be installed via the Linux. It will be installing Falco, your uh, driver and the default rules uh, via Docker or Helm uh, deployed as a daemon set to Kubernetes built from source. Now let's move on to demo. Before moving on to the demo, 
section, I just want to point out one very good resource, which is falco.org slash labs. Uh, now it, it introduces, you know, introduction to Falco and uh, does this particular threat. Then there's another lab, which is uh, based on the forensics inside the Kubernetes cluster. And then another one is on Falco sidekick. So I think it's a great way to learn Katakoda in build scenarios where you can run and see how Falco works. What I have done is I already have uh, Falco installed from um, the release pages and whenever Falco is installed, it installs certain modules and it installs uh, certain rules as well. So if you go to Falco um, directory in etc, you can see falco.yaml and falco.yaml uh, is basically a file that tells you uh, a lot about the Falco configurations, uh, like from where it is taking the data, uh, you know, it is taking the data, the rules file from Falco rules, Falco local rules, audit rules, and then uh, what are the outputs uh, which are there, uh, like syslog is enabled, file output is not enabled, std output is enabled. So all these uh, outputs are uh, defined in falco.yaml file. And another portion is Falco rules. Now these are the default rules and there are plenty of them. Now. A lot of great well-defined uh, rules are already there that you can you know uh, use and you can uh, modify the output if you also see uh, it's it's like the macros so rule is there then you have the description then the condition that is checked and then you have the output you can always change the output however you want to now it is very important uh, based on the CK certification as well of Falco is a good part in the CK certi Kubernetes CK certification so make sure you are a comfortable enough to change the kind of output uh, for different set of rules that that can be asked like uh, you know container run as a root user spawned process is there and you want, maybe you want some some other additional information with respect to the output that comes uh, so you need to modify this particular file and if you want any additional rules to be specified you can specify them in the falco rules local yaml because this is also you know uh, also gets loaded when you uh, run falco so what we'll do is we can actually run falco and see that all these rules are taken so you can see uh, the falco is initialized it is loading the rules from this file and then it is loading the rules from this file so all, all the files are being loaded so it is there now we'll run one uh, docker kind of bash shell and we'll see uh, what what appears in, in the falco so it is there i do ls i do exit and if i go back here so i can see i have made uh, this particular check as a warning like a, a spawning of a shell so a shell was spawned in a container with the attached terminal it you can depending on what you need you can define the uh, severity level as well like it's critical warning or info so you can you can do that as well and then you can uh, set up uh, the alerting system as well so that's kind of a very basic demo of falco uh, so that is what kind of falco does uh you know the runtime security tool you can see all the amazing things that it can do like you know privilege escalation check namespace changes with set ns uh read writes to uh, the directories they should be you know uh, giving the alerts out sim links and the port security policies one is there so a lot of stuff is already there which comes by default uh, falco rules uh, you can have the uh, alerting is there components we have already discussed like the user uh, space the configuration the drivers and yep that's pretty much it for falco and you can go to the blogs uh, all the latest blogs which are there uh, falco plugins is still in early access and the community is awesome my very good friend dan is is you know uh, heading the falco community and it's it's kind of pretty great so make sure you connect uh, on twitter github slack and contribute as much as you can uh, for falco uh, so I hope you liked the video on Falco. Um, give it a like uh, and share it with your friends. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.